Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and I have got another one of those games from, well, it's a game jam that was run by NASA. And part of the idea was that people would be able to use the vast uh, quantity of, of um, you know, media and resources that NASA has in its archives, and they would make a game with that, and obviously a space-themed game. And this is the one, this is the one that I, I have gravitated to. And the idea is... You build rockets with it. I'm going to show you roughly, we're going to start with this really simple prototype. And in fact, I'm going to cut things back. I'm going to scale things back to show you what's going on here, right? What we have is a fuel tank, right? Which is defined by white lines. White lines are container lines, right? Uh, in the middle, you have fuel, which is a block of fuel, essentially. Uh, this red line here is a fuel line, which travels through this little area here. Again, containers, white lines. Blue lines are just kind of struts that everything passes through. And this thing here is an ignition source. And what will happen when I start this is that any fuel touching this will combust spontaneously. So let's test it out, right? So there we go, press I. For some reason I got a blob over there, but look! Wow, we have fuel. I press I and we have fuel running through that little red line into that little chamber there. And when it hits the red line, it goes from little brown blobs to large white blobs. And we're flying out of the space here. But you can see we're actually rising as if we are on a rocket. Right, so what this is doing, I mean, this is kind of like a real rocket. What you have is highly compressed fuel goes into some sort of chamber and then through some chemical process, it expands. And the expansion pushes against the chamber walls and the thing, you know, it gets pushed forward to it. You can see this is kind of falling over. The physics for this are, I don't know, bizarre and broken in all sorts of ways. We can also come in and zoom. We can see this thing flying around. You can see now that uh, <laughs> it's kind of weird that gravity affects everything. There, it's, we're now sliding sideways around this planet. You can actually zoom all the way out and see this trail of um, fuel that I have left in the sky. Now... Right now I'm inside the atmosphere, so it kind of makes sense that the fuel would stop. Anyway, the idea is that we can actually turn this into a more efficient rocket. And, you, well, you saw what I did earlier. We had, let's start here and we'll have a little bit that goes out. And maybe extend that out a little more. Now let's do that. And again, we'll do the same here. Put it down, and of course we need to brace this with structure, otherwise it just flops all over the place, like something that flops a lot. Uh, let's just, you know, uh, let's just tie these things up in some reasonable way. <laughs> I'm not sure what order I'm doing this. It doesn't matter too much. I'm not sure if the mass of the vehicle is taken into account. I haven't actually figured that out. But look, this thing I have added a shield, right, a, or a, a rocket nozzle. And it's somewhat parabolic in shape, and the idea is this will help direct the thrust backwards, and I should fly better. So let's see if this actually works. Press I. Look at that. The thrust is much more contained. Of course, the whole thing is still currently uncontrolled. More f let's zoom out a little. You can see it actually flying off. I think it is going a little faster, but it's hard for me to tell because... Well, I don't remember what the instrumentation is, and no doubt somebody will look at the numbers after the fact and figure out that it wasn't going that much faster. Actually, there it is. It's going up, and you can see that it is actually forming this nice... Uh, it's generating this nice ballistic arc, showing me uh, what trajectory the whole thing's going to follow. You can see this stuff feeding through into the fuel line, into this combustion chamber, and then getting directed outwards. And so, you know, this is the principle of rocket nozzles, right? Uh, as the, the fuel comes out, it expands and pushes against it. So this is almost like a rocket nozzle design game. There we go. And, yeah, let's go back and let's see. So, in theory, we could take this. I want, we have to, unfortunately, we have to kill these things. We could make it bigger, right? So I'm right-clicking here. And we take the container and expand it all the way out to here. So by making the rocket nozzle longer, we are making it, you know, direct the, the thrust for longer, let's say, right? Structure, go here to here, and 
right click we'll just brace it across we'll, we'll get rid of some of that bracing I think I went a little over the top there okay so now try testing this and again there must be something under the ground but I can't figure a way to remove it so let's press I and I take off again taking off into the sky following the laws of motion so what happens when I'm low down is the, the little balls of gas, they accelerate out very quickly and then they get stopped, essentially. They get become, they reach, you know, some sort of equilibrium with the atmosphere near them. Uh, you can see this is actually even going faster still, I think, than my previous one. I'm not 100% sure. Now, one other thing to realize is that the acceleration of this is pushing the fuel downwards, so the fuel will end up at the bottom of the tank purely because of the acceleration of the vehicle. And as that burns out, as we get less and less fuel, the, the pressure becomes insufficient and the fuel basically stops feeding it and your rocket burns out. You, although you still get the odd thrust here and there. Uh, but that, I'm not sure, is even generating thrust with that shape. Well, I guess we're still moving a little. But how did we look? Eh, we're, we're not going so far, so bad. Now, how do you steer this is the next question. Obviously, we have not been steering it. But I can take this and we'll right-click this and we shall replace it with a new structure. Structure like this. Again, uh, I should have actually... It's not structure. Darn it! Not structure. I shall replace it with a container to contain the explosive energies being unleashed inside this rocket engine. And I know everyone should... Well, uh, the other thing I can do is... Remember how we saw it kind of failing towards the end? What I can do is shape this container a little better here. Maybe do that, that... That might work a little better so that when the combustion happens, it's pushed... Um... Yeah, that might work. Actually, you know, here's an idea. How about if I do this? Yeah, that'll be totally silly. I have no idea if that'll work. Let's put a fuel line in here. I'm getting distracted by trying to make a better rocket uh, rather than actually trying to explain what's going on here. Pardon me. Uh, let's do that there. That there. Okay, so what I've added, I've added these, and what we can use is hydraulics, right? And that will pull these things around as we're working with them. So I guess the best way is to stick that there and the right hydraulic goes there and the only thing is, well, yeah that's not going to work, I'm going to get rid of that right click. What I really need is more structure out here to, to pull against it, so I'll put these out like that, there we go. And that will contain the force and then the hydraulic, the left hydraulic goes on the left side obviously and the right hydraulic goes on the right side and I have just realized that I don't remember if I connected my fuel line in the right order so I'm going to make sure it goes from there to there. Oh, I said from there to there. Thank you. Okay, so now let us test this. Press I. And now you can see that if I want to steer it, what's happening is I'm expanding the nozzle on one side. Let's zoom in a little. Uh, camera 4, oh yeah, I'm already zoomed in, right? So I'm going up, so let's turn to the right, and you see that what I do is I let more of the fuel come out that way. And then I turn that off, and it will continue to rotate through its own inertia. Now, to correct the roll, I need to do that in the other direction. You see that coming out just a little? Now, obviously, this is not the same as gimballing an engine, but uh, it's, you know, it's functional in this context, I guess. And how are we doing? At least see, we're going, you know, we're, we actually are going sideways, so we're actually not doing so bad this time. This is a very, very simple rocket, obviously. Um, one thing to notice, actually, is that even though we're well high above the atmosphere now, the little blobs of fuel seem to be still, still getting caught up in the atmosphere. So there's something bizarre going on here. Notice also, yeah, I, th I think that's working slightly better as a thruster. Now you see we're reaching zero G and the fuel that was frozen to the front is coming off. So let's let's go back. You can also have multiple designs. Uh, I think this is the default design that comes with it. Or actually, I think this is an extended version. This is a bigger version that I made. And you can see this actually has more stuff on it. And then this is a crazy design. But let, let's see if I can get this one into orbit, right? 
Uh, ignition! Whoa! Excellent. And I'm immediately going to go sideways. Because I want to get into that orbit. And let's take a look at the camera. Excellent. I can see it here. Okay. Look at that. We're just going to go sideways as fast as this thing will let me. And it doesn't work hugely well. Whoa! No, 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 no. Overdoing it. Overdoing it. Overdoing it. Come on. Steer back. Steer back. I do not want to be on the ground. And then steer the other way. Steer the other way. This thing steers like a brick. Uh, it's shaped like one, too. I am unsurprised. Um, also note, the shape of the orbit is not correct. If you look very carefully, and maybe it's because, okay, maybe I'm saying that it's, it's really obvious, but it's not really obvious if you're, you know, just Joe Bloggs in the street. But to me, it be has become very apparent that this orbit is shaped incorrectly. <laughs> It looks to me like he's using a constant gravity force without any decay. So what's happening is we're getting an ellipse without uh, without the foci centered on the planet, which uh, is not realistic. But that's okay. Neither is having the fuel just you know grind to a stop while it's in space. There, look, we're practically done now. I have no more control now. You see, uh, an interesting problem which a lot of people may not think about is that once when you have a fuel tank sitting on the ground you know you're draining it from the bottom and uh, when you're having a rocket accelerating the acceleration is pushing the fuel to the back so you know it's getting its gravity from the acceleration but once that stops there's a whole bunch of technology to actually make fuel tanks that work in zero g because you can't guarantee that you're going to get fuel there's no <laughs> You know, there's a whole bunch of things to do with, like, making sure that the, the fuel flow is purged correctly or is balanced by gases and things like that. Yeah, look. So here we are. Yeah, we are in an orbit where the focus of, of the ellipse is actually in the middle of the planet. Uh, or sorry, not the focus. The center of the ellipse is smack bang in the middle of the Earth. So uh, I think he's used a constant force here, which is fine, you know. I think the game is great as like as a toy to play with. I wasn't expecting amazing, realistic, you know, functionality. <laughs> I, I I don't want to you know I don't want the dev to feel he's being criticised for his his silly mistake. I do love the engine trail that this thing left. Also, uh, I think this is the one thing that they actually use from NASA is this you know this historic image of the Earth that's taken. You see this image of the Earth everywhere. It is. Very common. Um, it's you know pretty cool. Okay, so that's me in something of... I think F makes me go faster. No? Yeah, F supposedly makes me go faster. So you can see that I have actually achieved something of an orbit here. But it's taking a really long time. Damn me and my, you know, high-powered flight thing. There we go. Look, flying over the top. It It's just going to keep on orbiting like that. Uh, unless there's some bizarre thing in it. Okay, what else do we have? I did come up with another thing. Yeah, this one, and actually, I'm going to change this. I'm going to right-click it. <laughs> Stupid idea here, right? Take take the container. I'm going to do this. Take the container. Uh, so, you know, why why have a fuel line? Why not just put the igniter right here? That wouldn't, Isn't that a good idea? And then I'm going to take this... I'm going to get rid of this, yeah. And container goes like this. There we go. Container! There we go. That should give me uh, an epically powerful rocket because it will not be constrained by the, the rate at which the fuel line can deliver the fuel to the engine. It will just deliver it as fast as it, it is coming. I guess I need some extra structure to, to support this thing. And like that. That should that should do, right? So let's try this. Though I won't even need to ignite this thing. I'll just press uh, press start, and it'll just fly off totally uncontrolled. No, I'm in the wrong camera mode. Look at that thing. 
<laughs> it's generating way more. It's like exploding out of there so fast the physics engine can't handle it. <laughs> Oh man, I'm trying to I'm trying to control it. Look at this, it's actually exploding inside the fuel tank, right? Like the explosion is traveling back into the fuel tank. <laughs> yes, I like that. But <laughs> it's kinda cool. This is what happens when uh this does happen in rockets sometimes when pumps and stuff fail. Like the combustion can end up doing weird things back in the fuel tank. Look at this. That's not so good. Let let's now let's go back to the original design. The original design, I think, was was clearly better. Let's clear that. Put the ignition over here again, and the struct. Oh, we're gonna put a container in. We'll just put just put container right here. There we go, and another container right here. That should work fine. We just need some structure to make sure that it doesn't flop all over the place like an incredibly floppy thing and another one here oh yeah we should probably have cross bracing there cross bracing since these things don't actually melt under the punishment of the rocket fuel there we go <laughs> it's it's like a solid rocket booster this one look at this let's I, I I can't see the mouse pointer here's the problem I can't see the mouse pointer when I'm zooming out there look at that <laughs> totally unguided burning stuff at a ridiculous rate as like as fast as it gets to I'm not and and it's pushing just against the rest of the fuel which is in turn pushing against the rocket um, apparently there was a bug in an early version that let uh, fuel lines generate thrust essentially without firing anything out the back uh, this one is nicer than the one with the fuel line because after the fuel lines get done, it, it the thrust kind of goes to zero. But this one actually keeps going pretty well until we've lost a lot of the fuel. Um, how, which which are we on? Oh, okay, that's a pretty uh, good orbit. Yeah, again, you see this orbit. The orbit comes down and continues underneath the surface, and it doesn't appear like a regular ellipse. So as I said, I think he's just used a constant gravitational force. Yeah, this. There we go. And of course, if you're just being stupid, you know what you can do, right? Let's. I'm gonna right-click everything here. Kill it all. Kill it. Right. Right. There's no like saving of stuff. So I I need to kind of manually right-click and remove things. I've got four rocket slots. Uh, okay. There we go. 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 Get rid of all this. So yeah, let's let's take the fuel and we'll right click on it. Take take, and instead let's build a a block of fuel. This is like the Minecraft. What the deuce? How? Wait, two now? You're kidding me! There's a bug, sir. There is a bug in your thing which means I can only add so many okay I'm gonna exit this um, start again go back to my fuel oh no darn it no let's go to number four can I put more fuel in ah there there we go no it's only letting me have two now you're ah, ah. I am angry with you, you and your bugs. Look, so <laughs> so this is the Minecraft equivalent of building a giant block of TNT. Look, we can test this. <laughs> yeah, let, let's do that on the, the bigger scale, right? Ready? Edit. Test. Boom. <laughs> I think there's a bug because I was previously able to add like six blocks of fuel. So, so yeah, this is developed by Cryptic C, who they've previously made a uh, a game. They've made they previously made a bridge building game in the past. So it's not entirely uh, you know you'll see the interface is very similar if you've played a lot of these bridge building games. I'm just going to try and build something that does silly things. So what we're just going to do is build ignition here do like this and then 
build a container. Cryptic C are also responsible for the game Gish, which is actually pretty darn entertaining and is available on Steam, so you should probably, you know, if you if you want to support the developer, that's one way. Um, let's start this and see what happens. Oh, yes. Uh, I should probably... Oh, yes, of course, I have no bracing on this. The thing just becomes a crazy Mobius loop thing. So, yeah, I mean, it's apparent to me there's, like, this is, like, a new level in simulators. You know, you have Orbiter, which simulates vehicles. It does them very well, but all of the internal systems are kind of codified in, in somebody's uh, DLL. Then you have Kerbal Space Program, where you're building things out of blocks, and it's simulating fuel flow and the forces on it and, the, you know, the stresses on the whole thing. Now... This is actually simulating the forces and the behavior of a very specific component. It's simulating, it, you know, all the molecular structure of the fuel or whatever. I mean, I don't know where this goes. At some point, do we end up with, like, you know, digital molecular materials where, you know, we're simulating every single thing and every single polygon on those on spacecraft in every game can be destroyed and distorted. Is that where we're going? That would be awesome. But this, this is just a bunch of fun. I'm trying to you know, brace this so I can make it spin around here, putting some triangles in the interior and... I'll just put some things here. I, you know, I, I'm no, I'm not an engineer. I need to make triangles everywhere. Triangles, triangles, triangles. I just want this thing to spin on its axis and see what happens. Oh, okay, that should work a little better. Let's test this. So yeah, if you want this, you have to go to the Cryptic C, Cryptic C's blog. I don't know where this thing has gone. Uh, <laughs> um, no sign of it. Let's let's uh, let's try a uh, let's try editing it and testing it again. There it goes, and then it just disappears completely. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, the speed is like th you know, five kilometers per second. I think we have a winner here. Yeah, so crypticc.blogspot.com if you want this particular game. Uh, also, there is a whole bunch of other games that actually use the, the NASA um, resources, NASA media, to make interesting things of their own. Uh, you should check it out in the NASA Game Jam. Look it up on the internet. And I can't remember the URL right now, but I will make sure I put it in the description. Anyway, with this thing heading off to infinity at ridiculous rates, I think it's time for me to say, I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.